everyone, my name is Jess. I'm the artist behind Art by Panza, and today I'll be teaching you how to paint your very own rainbow misty forest. All you need is a few colours, a paintbrush and some watercolour paper. Let's get to it. The supplies that we need uh, firstly is watercolour paper, which I've just taped down with some blue painters tape. We'll need a paintbrush. Today I'm using the Princeton Heritage Round 3 paper towel. I've got two water jugs just off camera. One is dirty, one is clean water. And of course you need paints. So today I'm going to use the primary set from the watercolour factory. So we've got primary red, which I'll explain in a second, primary blue and primary yellow. So traditionally uh, you would use uh, like a traditional red, traditional blue, traditional yellow, but the watercolour factory, her primary red is more of a magenta. I love this because you get really bright uh, colours, uh, bright purples. I feel like the mixes are a lot nicer, but honestly it's just personal preference. So, what we need to do is we need to work from light to dark. So basically Whatever is further away from you is going to be lightest and whatever is closest to you is going to be the darkest. And the order uh, in which the rainbow goes uh, is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So because I'm using a primary magenta instead of a primary red, I will need to actually mix my red. So I'll need to mix red with a tiny bit of yellow. You mix red and yellow to make orange. I'll use my straight yellow. I'll mix yellow and blue to make green. I'll use my straight blue. I'll mix blue with a little bit of violet to make indigo and in order to make that violet I need to mix red and blue. So this is basic colour theory so I think this exercise is actually uh, really good practice for that. I'll start by mixing my red. Now as I said because we're working from light to dark what I'll do is I'll mix my colour and then I'll add uh, quite a bit of water to it until I get the desired value that I, that I want to use. Um, it's also a good note or worth mentioning that um, having a piece of scrap watercolour paper off to the side is going to be really handy for testing your colours and testing the value so you know that you're happy with it. So I'm just going to mix my red if you have a palette that actually has all of the colors that you need already mixed, feel free to use that. You don't need to mix your own colors. Uh, if it's easier for you to do this with pre-mixed colors, then you do you. All right, so I'm happy with that red. And now I'm just gonna add lots of water to it and I really want to get this as light as possible all right so I'm happy with that so in order to paint the trees I'll actually show you this with a darker color uh, just so it's a bit easier for you to see you want to make sure that you have a nice tip on your brush so uh, if it's easier for you, you can just kind of roll the paintbrush to get that tip. If you have too much paint on your paintbrush, it will actually, you'll see the water dripping off and you can just dab off on a um, paper towel to get off that excess water. So what we're doing is I like to just paint a very thin tree trunk it's your choice whether the tree is really full or whether the tree is a bit sparse. So what I do is I just do like a series of dabs 
and I start, it's essentially you're working in a triangle. You don't want it to be perfect because trees aren't perfect in real life. But you just want to do some random dabs so that you get that tree shape. Okay. If you wanted it to be really full, of course, as I said, you can be a bit more dramatic. If you want it to be really sparse, then you can you can do that as well. The other alternative, I guess this is really a style preference, is you can just do horizontal dashes. if you prefer this style. It's up to you. Have a play with it. Do what you like to do. All right, so I'm going to paint my first set of trees and I'll show you how to get that misty effect. So I'll lay down a couple of trees first What I've done now is I've just taken the colour off my brush, I've dabbed it off slightly onto a paper towel and I'm just going to lay my brush down underneath these trees to try and get this misty effect. So the more white of the paper that you have, the mistier it'll look. Alright, so let's move on. can see in this first layer I'm not really thinking too hard about how many trees I'm using uh, painting the size of the trees keep it very random keep it very sporadic so I'm going to use a heat gun to dry off these layers so that I can continue working if you would prefer not to you can just have you just have to wait for this to dry Okay, so now I'm going to mix an orange. And I'm just going to start a little bit lower, a little bit underneath the red layer and I want to leave some white space. So this is what actually creates that misty look. You really want to use the white of the paper. And you can also change up the style of the trees as you're working on this. That will also help to give it that random feel.
Now you can see I'm mixing the violet off to the side because I'd want to add as little water to this as possible. I really want it to be uh, as pigmented as I can. And there you have it, a rainbow misty forest using only three colours. Alright, that is it. You have just painted your very own rainbow misty forest and you should have something that looks a little bit like this. I would love to see your final pieces. Tag me over on Instagram, I'm at Art by Panza and I really hope you've loved this project. See you later.